frontier is defined as uncharted territory by land or notion. Those who chart that territory tell a story. The past illustrates the blueprint for the present. How things are and how they've evolved. From land to water, we are challenged to border that new frontier. A frontier the outdoorsman knows like no other. Author Gary Lewis works his way along that edge of where discoveries, failures, and achievements have written the story of the sportsman. Yes! Yes! From state to state, continent to continent, the stories told create the foundation of the present and they lay the framework for the future. Through the muzzle fire and on the stone are stories from the edge. Water is the most important thing as far as Indians are concerned, because that's, that's life. The past is written, the present is here, and this is Frontier Unlimited. Gary Lewis, with his friends Dan and Debbie Getz of Warren Scope Mounts, met Dusty Shell in a small Wyoming town. They had been together before in Wyoming for Pronghorn. Very gently. Same rifle? Different one. This is a 27 nozzler. We're shooting the far left part, four orange dots on it. Okay. Uh, whichever dot you'd like to shoot. Very good. You're half inch to the right, a half inch high. There's a horse down range. Somebody's got their horse down there. <laughs> this is not a good place to keep a horse, I wouldn't think. But. We're shooting really good. My rifle's on. This is one of the most important things. When you fly and you arrive, do your shooting, make sure you're hitting on target where you're supposed to be, and then you got a confidence when the hunt starts in the morning. Last week, their boots were frozen to the bunkhouse floor, Dusty Shell told the crew. Well, we're going to start, we're just going to look, uh, cruise around and look at a lot of deer uh, from there. Just look for a good, uh, mature, four and a half year old plus, um, if we can find, you know, five and a half year old deer. That would be wonderful. Dylan and a fawn? Yep, we're doing our fawn. For the most part, we're just, uh, you know, drive out to, you know, somewhere where we've got a little elevation where we can see quite a bit of country and then just glass, glass from there. And then if we spot something, we can pursue it. Life is composed of moments. One of Lewis's favorite pictures of the Old West is a General George Custer at the yeah, Black Hills. It's kind of ruffled up a little. A couple of young four before. Custer poses with his grizzly bear. Favorite companions and Crow Indian scouts lounge nearby. An elk head rests forgotten in the background. Custer called his grizzly hunt his greatest moment as a hunter. The moment speaks to a time between the wars when there seemed to be solutions, a coming together, hopefulness. A time before the buffalo were almost lost, when game abounded, when America was young. Well, we're just going to sit here for a while and just see if by chance he happens to come back out. But um, most likely they're going to just go up into the timber there and lay up for the morning. And then we'll 
uh, just come back and get set up and still come feeding out one of these uh, meadows here. Uh, come back this, to this evening. This place will come right back to this place. Yeah, they usually will come back down. They might make a circle and be. They went up over here, so they might come uh, down over here. Maybe the next one. We'll we'll find them somewhere. It was midday, Wyoming, November, in the Black Hills, and temperatures had soared into the 70s. Skies were blue, the wind calm, forgotten. That coyote was just sitting in the sun, probably sleeping like I was a few minutes ago. I think we woke it up and well, I was looking through my binoculars, I was thinking, that's a big coyote. <laughs> One less coyote. Sometimes I think, you know, you gotta shoot the coyotes to deserve the deer. It's all part of the conservation. I don't remember it being quite so nice in November, considering where we just came from. A week ago today, our boots were froze to the floor in elk camp. We got a couple of does right down here in this little draw. They seem to be by themselves. A couple does over that way. One walking along the ridge. Um, we're gonna sit here for a little while longer. And then in the last uh, 45 minutes of prime time, then we'll cruise down and around and then go back up in here and make sure that nothing has slipped down uh, into the creek bottom where we can't see it. go drop down like we did and then we won't get we're gonna not go clear to the end yep. and then take a little kind of a lap through there and there's that other buck down here somewhere that we never did see again so No one was counting, but they had seen at least 20 bucks between the morning and the afternoon hunts. Late in the afternoon, they consulted the legal sunset time for Crook County and calculated 30 minutes past that, the end of shooting light. Still in Dusty's flatbed Ford, with the light going fast, they emerged from the canyon. Dan stepped around the front of the Ford, now stepping out of the shadow of a wash, now stepping into the knee-high yellow grass lit by the last rays of the sun. clean shot right through the shoulder yeah it just went right down and it's a big fat deer too thank you very you much. yeah thanks. well done man thanks for the good shoot get your hands on that rascal Pfizer. yeah <laughs> that is gorgeous look how wide it is amazing yeah real close to 18 inches wide 18 inches wide yeah. I'll tell you so. well I'm glad that we passed the buck yeah an hour ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because yeah, just having both brow tines. Yeah, and I am very a, pleased with this. Yeah, makes it a very Me nice too. deer. Me too. So, oh my god, 
and we, we saw another buck that was um, almost as white as this, uh, missing a brow tine, and um, Dusty wanted to pass, and... Thank you for making that choice. Yeah, well, yeah good call. You know, one of the things that I get um, super exercised about is when you get a chance to do some real conservation, because we're taking care of, of the next generation when we control some predators. And I think sometimes you gotta change the tone. And what we proved this morning is we could shoot that coyote and there was a three point buck, a three by three, 150 yards away, unconcerned. And we did the right thing and protected the next generation of deer and then Dan the opportunity late in the evening and makes it happen with a really good shot. I love it. I'm just amazed at, at being able to do that shot in the, in the very last few moments of shootable daylight. It was an extraordinary experience for me to do that. Dan's shot was 115 yards in the failing light. Dan marked his deer tag by the headlights. In the morning, they climbed into the super cab flatbed. Debbie Getz had her rifle out of the case, a new lightweight Christensen Arms bridge line, stoked with three rounds of 6.5 creep. We're going to drive out this morning and cover uh, quite a bit of the same country as we did yesterday. And we've seen that real good buck um, with Dan. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go kind of investigate that a little bit and see if he uh, turns up anywhere. And then we'll uh, probably uh, dip into some uh, fresh stuff that we didn't see yesterday and uh, see if we can come up with anything new. Okay, sounds good. That's a nice deer. It's just a clean, clean eight pointer. Is it bigger than Dan's? It's taller. It's taller. It's a little heavier. It's probably a year older. Shall we go for it? Well, that's, that's totally up to you. I'm, I'm fine either way. I'd say, let's see what else the morning turns up. I'll go with that. He's nice. We can always find him again. Oh, yeah. He'll be right around here somewhere. The strategy for the day was unchanged. Binoculars and a spotting scope. Take their time. Find a good buck plan the stock. Uh, we're going to go down here into another little area of the ranch that we haven't been yet and uh, investigate that, look around. The evening so far seemed to be a little bit more movement than the mornings. The mornings have been falling off pretty quick, um, you know, after the first couple hours. And then the evenings have been a little bit more productive so far of what we've seen. So. Uh, we'll do just a, a little bit more uh, glassing and then see what uh, we come up with and uh, go and uh, maybe see if we can turn up one of those uh, couple of nice bucks that we've seen uh, earlier in the hunt. I was looking at that one right through the corner of the trees there, but... A wide field of ryegrass came into view. And with all these deer in the field, there's no way we can make a stock. And, you know, once we get out of the truck, they'll just all clear the field. So we're just going to 
drive along the field edge here and see if we can get on the other side of these deer and get a little closer to the uh, shooter bucks. So three deer, and he's just below. Yep, he's in the sun. Okay. Crack another shell in. Yeah, he's he's, he's right down. Woo Amazing. Okay. Two hundred ninety-one yards for that shot. So. Yeah, it's a long shot. I saw you make your that little was, adjustment yeah, on your scope. Yeah, you did. You adjusted it. Why don't you count points, Debbie? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Nine, Eastern, ten? Eastern count. Debbie put her hands on the antlers. Five per side, 10 points. It was the very buck they had seen the day before with Dan when the deer went away from them and out of sight. So this one was worth it, worth the wait. Absolutely worth the wait. Lewis was looking for a candidate, a buck as good as the forest would give up on a clear blue November morning with the mercury headed into the 70s. We've seen about 10 bucks already this morning, and we're looking for, we're just looking for just one, but we haven't seen the one yet. There's a little more cloud cover today than there has been. If the cloud cover increases, then the deer may be more confident. With the bright moon we've had at nighttime, they've been feeding at night, so they're laying up at this time of the morning, and we might see some more moving here again in another hour or hour and a half. That's why we hunt coyotes. That will do. 395. We're gonna get down into this creek bed. And we're gonna go cut the distance to maybe 265, 275. And see if that buck is still there. They pulled out, planning to return later in the afternoon. I think rather than put all of our eggs in one basket right here this evening, um, for one buck that we don't even know 
if he's still here or not here, if he's moved down the creek or up the creek, I think we'll kind of move on and might check back later. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can dig something else up. That sounds good to me. There's a buck over here on the right too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Go up to these tables. And yeah, and let's just go up the fence line here. The stock used five minutes while they closed the gap to less than a hundred yards. Right there. Okay. You want me to go up the fence first? I'll do fence first. Buck. Yeah. Good job. Good job. A nozzler acubon laced across the meadow and the great buck fell one side of its antler above the top of the grass. Real nice looking deer. Yeah. You know, on all the bucks that we got, we didn't settle on a single one of them. Each one was the biggest one we saw that day and we just made it work by, by looking at a lot of bucks and then seeing the right one and, and making a play for it. A moment in the afternoon sun, flowers will grow come spring, and the new white tail fawns on their spindly legs will lose their spots. A little buck will grow its first hand.